Rick Hello everyone and welcome to another vlogcast. Yeah, we haven't done one of these in a while. Well, we have, um, but we keep doing them like this because it's the best way to do them. I think we might come on camera for, a, for another one. Mm. Um, because in front of me, I've got all of the work that needs doing. Um, but we're in the kitchen area, which um, is where I do all the reading and mm -hmm, um, all of the YouTube stuff. We have the floating table here. We also have our breakfast and bedtime drinks and stuff from here. We used to have our breakfast in the office, but really... Mm. We've expanded this as well, so it's like our comfort, comfort area. It is. Mm. It's part of the den. Yeah. Part of the shack. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's where you live, breathe, fart. Um, <laughs> well, we do have the toilet, so I, I would say we do other things, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um... But all in honesty, you know, um, my trigger, my lock button is on double. Yeah. 814, my trigger, my lock, finish recording button. So I did kind of want to do the whole podcast type thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I just really wanted to talk at people because that's what I do. I use the YouTube and people listen to the, to the YouTube, mm. um, but we, we is the royal we. Um, I've just done two videos, by the way. Um, I, I want to say I've got two Lazy Sunday videos and the Christian Weekend video coming out on the channel, which I think is the most important video. Mm. On there. Um, there's loads coming out for the website. Oh yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. There's tons of stuff coming out for the website. And in fact, the thing that we're going to push for is the Mike's Skydive. Uh, to buy a CD from um, from Paul for ten pounds, um, or a USB. Um, so we're going to ask Paul if we could use a couple of pictures, but I'm not going to pay ten pound for it because. Um, we're only using one photo. It'd be good if we could get, because I've already got a couple of photos, but it'd be good if I could get a few photos and stitch them together mm. and have that. I think I can get some screenshots. Because, and here's another thing. It looks like Paul wants me to, he knows that I've got some videos for the behind the scenes. He wants to pay, he wants me to pay him Ten pounds for the footage I've already got. Um, I'm not paying him. Uh, I'm I'm not paying him ten pounds. Um, I mean, if somebody was to give me ten pounds, that would go to the group, anyways. Mm. That's the way it would work. I mean, that's what you could do. It's like ten pounds. Yeah, I think there's a there's a way I can do it where. Um, a paid promotion through YouTube. I'm sure there's a way of doing it where mm. um, through the channel. But I can't get money through the comment section because I know people have tried doing that. Um, the best way is to do it through something else. Um, and 
I'm not putting anything that Black Knights have done into my video because I haven't had their permission. There's two photos, I will put them in and I will put Black Knights. But I don't know, it, it got very iffy. They didn't mind you filming on their premises though, obviously. Yeah, they didn't. That was the thing. They didn't mind us photographing or filming or anything. But the thing was, oh, the thing is, um, you know, why can't we do something to make money for the group? Mm. Um, because like it, it's all going excuse me it's all going to a good cause but I'd already paid money to uh, watch Mike I'd already donated money, so I'm not donating any more money. Um, but I'm thinking we could sell, we could advertise it, um, and then we could put the phone number on for people to ring, and then they could then contact. They could, because um, like, People do like, yeah. As people want to still sponsor Mike, and I think this ten pound to go for a DVD would work pretty well. Um, you know, I mean, if we started getting some pen drives together, people could sell it on that. Mm. But really, um, it's like I've said countless times, um, I don't know, see like, it looks to me like Paul's paid for the video, not Mike. And if I really wanted them pictures and videos, if I really wanted the full package, I'd pay for it. Mm. But I got, oh, excuse me, I've got what I wanted anyway. Mm. And that's coming out when it comes out, it'll come out, well, it'll come out week after next now. Because um, I still need the Coniston stuff. Yeah, there's that. There's so much content I've got already. Um, but um, the channels, you know, oh, you want to talk about the channel next? Well, you were going to talk about something. Yeah, the reason why we've not said marketing slash advertising is in our title um, is because one, not to confuse people, and two, so it's like, what's this company doing? If we say the one thing, then we know it's not going to confuse people. Mm -hmm. And also it was annoying me because when we were web design and development, we were getting more web design and less web development jobs. We were. Mm. That reminds me actually, I do need to contact um, Nathaniel tomorrow. Because mm. we've, got, we've got a lot of work coming in. Um, the office has been busy and I don't mean just a little bit busy wait the desk is piling up with paperwork I mean gigantically busy 
and we've got five projects in the in the pipeline you know as everybody should know with those projects they've been important ones for a while mm. you know but we're hitting a quiet spell now so um everything's calmed down a little bit uh we got our customers i'm happy um the big work's gonna come in but i'm happy for just to get everything coming in um you know because we are doing some big work some big contract work and we're doing other bits and pieces i'm doing stuff for xcom which is fine because i'll market for another company mm. um i'll just use all my resources which is good because mm. you should um that's another thing for another day another day another dollar mm. That's what they say in the American mm. um, films. But as well, I mean, like, we just got, I, I mean, Adam Winters, our project manager. Yeah. Mm. He's just... And actually, I wanted to say about Tom walking out the door. Um, that day was so difficult for me. Mm. It was so difficult. We had meetings, we had discussions. We didn't have enough discussions about him going, which we should have had, but we did have. Well, on the Friday, because I still need to make all the notes. I mean, that's another thing tomorrow. Mm. Um, we need to have the discussion in the morning on the phone then when Adam com comes in we need to say right that's on the desk for you because we need to get everything sorted mm. we haven't got time to have meetings all the day but I'm going to have two project days a week this is going to really piss me off two project days a week mm. um, Yeah, two project days. I mean, as well, my fitness is important as well. Mm. My fitness is really, really important. I'm getting um, a personal trainer sorted out. Um, but yeah, it's strange though, because like Tom McInhill, he, he was horrible to Rosemary. Mm. And we need to get her on the next vlogcast because mm. we can't just clear everything that's gone on. Mm. So we need to do a behind the scenes about that as well. Like kind of backtrack a bit and kind of say, oh, well, this is what's happened. And Well, people will have read it on the Facebook page and on the website. It's not on the website yet, I don't think. Mm. I'll have to look at the forum posts. <laughs> you know, I'm a I'm a bugger for that. Mm. But um, well, at this stage, um, We need to say what we have and haven't done. You know, that's, yeah, that's putting it mildly. Mm. But when he walked out the office, a lot was happening, you know, and we needed him and he wasn't with us. So it was the backwards and forwards. And it, like, he wasn't helping matters. He wasn't letting us make the changes. Mm. A bit like the endotronics though, really, isn't it? You know, 
a company on the edge and well I think when somebody doesn't want change I mean I don't want change it's strange because I want change but don't want change Tom I would say has more he he's hiding I think he's got something um, because we well, think he's got autism I think well yeah because he's like I don't want the changes I don't you know I'll keep the outlook keep all that crap he hated the communication sheets coming in um, but that was the stuff that needed to come in mm. um, it was like Oh, another another laptop. Oh, crumbs! Do not get me there. I know he's like, you should have got me another laptop then. Yeah, I mean, already gave you a tablet, and and it's like, well, uh, the calls kept glitching out. Yeah, because you kept ending the call halfway through. You know, he left the call on some of the conferences and we're like, oh, Tom, why? Mm. And we still not have to go ahead. No. Mm. And it's like... Eight twenty nine pm Um... 8.30... Things were still let, you know. They were up in the air way before we even. Um, before Adam stepped in. But it's like, he knew Adam was taking place, but it's like, he didn't want to step down, he didn't want to. No. Nope. And the comments we got on those forum posts. Comments we got on this forum post were absolutely unbelievable. But Adam Winters, he's had terrible, terrible slack. Because mm. he came in as a freelancer. Then he worked for us. Then he was back to being a freelancer again. And then he came back and worked for us. And it was great because then he was going to leave. And then he didn't. And then... Um, and then he's like oh well I'm going to be a problem solver yeah but then he really really stepped in when he, when he said I'm going to solve the problems he really really stepped in with two projects yeah. and that really really shocked us and then it's like he stepped up to the plate then and it was like Adam we need you because he was so faster and and that really shocked me because I didn't know how fast he could be and it wasn't just like that it was like Adam was doing things he was going he's moving forward he's like what are you doing with the website yeah well actually I spoke to somebody who I'm not going to talk about on the vodcast but I was talking to somebody outside of here and she said oh why don't you do this and why don't you use your Facebook page more? And why don't you get people using social media more? Yeah. So I spoke to Adam about this and he's like, I've already done it. Well, I nearly hit the floor that day. <laughs> um, but it, it's like, you know, it's like, what are we not doing? Yeah. And I'm like, hold on here. I'm, we're not on side road anymore. And yet, I've got two companies, like the other company needs to step up to the plate, just as much as this one. I'm not an outside road, yet I feel someone's breathing down my neck saying, this is what I should do, this is what I shouldn't do. I mean, I, I want to back off on the social media because once it's on social media, people have read it, people have had, you know, they can soak it in like a sponge. So once it's on Facebook, it's there. You know, you don't need to put it on Facebook again. Um, 
Once it's on Twitter, it's there. Once it's on Insta, it's there. And I think that's the beauty, like, you know, on Facebook, you can put the same thing on every day and push it and it's like... Well, yeah, I mean, I've said to our other friend about her project, The Friendship Cafe, I've said, you know, we need to push this more because, you know, you want people coming. I said, one post at the end of every week is not going to cut it. And she was shocked. She was like, it's strange because we're not used to, you know, I'm used to a bit of slow pace. As well. I mean, I'm, I'm used to a bit of fast pace. Um, that's like, you know, I mean, I've told the story about, you know, when we were in builders' offices at Arnside Road and we were going and we were using snail mail and I was saying, Jack, we need the fax machine. Mm. You know, oh, well, you know, we got it. Mm. Then we got the internet and when we got the internet, things were like, oh, no. And I think people hate the internet because you can't, like, I think that would have been at Arnside Road we could have sneakily done Facebook and he would have been, he would have hated it, mm. I think. Um, I mean, he hated the internet. He really, really hated that because he really hated that he wasn't in control. And I think that's the thing when we're doing internet, and we're on social media, the only way that someone could have control is if they took our phone, I mean, or computer or whatever. I think the other way that they could have control is if they saw it um, and told us to delete it. Mm. Um, it depends what, what reason. It's usually data protection and all of that palaver. Um, which, like, when it's on social media, data protection isn't Oh, no, no, no. No, because I researched... I researched it. There is data protection on Facebook. Um, for other companies. But... Um, companies have the right to own you. You know, companies have the right to own what you do. Um... But Facebook owns everything anyway. Facebook owns everything. Isn't it like companies can buy your photos that you put on there? And... Yeah. There's been, well, there's been cases, hasn't there? Of what people, how much ownership, uh, plagiarism, all this crap. Um... But yeah, because um, the Mind Mob logo, there was a lot of slack of who actually owned what, which is why we open sourced everything on the market day. Mm. But I said, you know, we've outsourced. Most of the stuff, the logo was cheaper than the name was. Mm. Which brings us to the name of this channel. If we changed it to Ball and McInhill Productions, I don't think people would get the whole thing. It's strange though, because a couple of your friends think, you know, yeah, they know. Mm. They know. Well, I answered the phone yesterday and I said, Ball and McInhill Productions, Stephen Nightingale Ball speaking. And they thought, is that his answer phone? And I'm like, no, 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 it's not the answer phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know someone did that to me once, though. Um... I thought it was an answer phone message and they didn't speak 
And then I, uh, my stepdad said something. Um, and then they piped up and I was like, I'm sorry, I thought this was the answer phone. No, it's not the answer phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have just left them to talk. Mm. Yeah, this is the answer phone. The answer phone, put it on mute. Beep. Mm. I know someone who's done that as well. <laughs> what, one of your ex-girlfriends or something? Yeah. Mm. Um, one of my ex-girlfriends did it. Uh, I think it was Kylie. Yeah, Kylie did it once. This is a message. <laughs> and she went silent. So I said a lot of stuff. And in the end, she was like, Stephen, this is not an answer phone message. <laughs> is it not? <laughs> well. Mm. Oh, yeah, because wasn't that? No, that was not after I split up with Zoe, but she did it again. Um, when I was splitting up with a, another girlfriend, and I was like, she was like, you've reached Kylie you now. Okay. I was like, Kylie, I was like, I just want to tell you, I'm just trying to split up with someone and they've not messaged me back. Stephen, what are you trying to do? Oh, sorry. I thought this was an answer phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spilling my guts, you know, as you're supposed to do. Um... Yeah, but um, and plus I was quite serious on the phone as well when they rang me. Mm. When this person rang me, mm. but yeah. Mm. It's strange because we've talked about work on the VOG cast. Well, I think we should talk a bit more, but we should find a segue because we spoke about Tom. An actual fact, I know Tom's imaginary, but I did feel sad on Friday. I tried to show it in the anger because I was a bit angry about him going, but I was actually kind of sad because I didn't want him to go. I wanted him to stay. But he wanted to walk out the door and I couldn't stop him. Mm. I knew it was out of my hands. I think the politics of it. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. It's complicated. Mm. At the end of the day, you've just got to let someone walk out the door. Mm. I think changes to the actual company um, are happening um, for the bad and for the good. Mm. I think if I went, then you definitely... Yeah, I mean, if you and Adam went out the door, mm. that'd be it. You'd know there'd be a change then. Mm. Um, But it's like, it's like, uh, mummy was saying to me, she said, you're not gonna kick Charles out, are you? I was like, no, this is Tom. Oh, so she does know. Yeah, yeah, apparently stuff happened. Um, which is a bit personal. Mm. Um, when he was living with us, yeah, because he's like... But it's like... He's not a bad penny. Um, there's been a bit of bullying going on, but... I think... There's been a bit of frustration and sadness. And... Needless to say... Because we live and work in the same place. You know, people who work from home probably know where I'm coming from but this is like the home is near to work and 
I've been living in my workplace for the past few months. I've been living here since October. Um, and I, I wanted to sleep, eat and breathe the office. And that was my commitment. Mm. I wanted to sleep, eat and breathe the office. So for me, to see that dirty laundry creeping in, um, quite literally, because mm. um, you got the washing machine in there, in the utility room, yeah. But seriously, to see the creep, the dirty laundry creeping in, it's been a bit like a soap opera. Mm. And we've had arguments, and when things that you don't know, when there's been some silent and stuff creeping in, that's even worse. But the worst thing for me was not just to not realise it, but to not know the unknown. Mm. And we don't talk about this much. But I think that, you know, when you're airing your dirty laundry in a workplace, it gets a bit ummy and ari. But when you're very close to that person, you know, when you're friends with somebody in a workplace, it's like when someone goes through that door, they talk to me about projects, they talk to me about marketing, they talk to me about media, they talk to me about software, they talk to me about all that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, when I'm in work mode, I'm here to serve that. Mm. You know, when I was in McGull Radio Studio, I always, when they always said on the group, they always said, don't talk about this because it's political and we don't want you to talk about it. I'd be like, fine. Mm. And I'd be like, I mean, my sidekick, he always wanted to bring stuff in the studio that I wasn't prepared to bring in. And I was like, whoa, whoa, not on my show. Mm. And it happened once. And I said, please don't talk about that again. I don't want to hear it, mm. you know? Um, Eight forty-five p.m. You want your notes now? Yes, please. Mic lock. Button. Mic lock. Mic lock. Mic print. Mic lock. Button. So is on. Double. We just did our drink and that. We kind of really want to bring things away from from work. Um, so talk about with it charging the beats up. I've just got this piece of what do you call it? Oh god damn I'm there for somebody. Um
Yeah. Um, but Silver Room is coming back, making a comeback. As a website, as a magazine, as everything. Uh, through Ball and Mackinac Productions, but we're, you know, we're not actually printing it, printing it type of thing yet. Mm. We're not ready to print a magazine. But, again, the Facebook page for Magic Silver Room has just grown over lockdown. I can't believe how much stuff has grown to its own points or its own levels or whatever. Anyway, um, we're going to leave it there. We're going to end things right there because we've, you know, yeah. Mic trigger, mic lock, finish recording. <laughs>